Amen. Happy Wednesday, y'all. Happy Wednesday. Right on. You know what? I dress for the occasion because this is going to be more like a workshop, if you will. So if, y'all, if some of y'all want to come closer, you can because I'm giving the scribe, whenever she gets here, I'm giving her the night off because it is already done on the board. So if you want to come closer, that's cool. I do have some stuff up here. So this is going to be a bit interactive, okay? So if you want to come up here and get these three items, that would be great. I brought 30 copies, but if more are needed, that's easy for me to get or to send out, okay? Great seeing everybody, and our vacation people are back. The Newsons and the Williams and the Barlows are back. Yes. Y'all had a good old time. I loved all y'all pictures. I'm going to get back on and love them some more. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get a chance to stay on too long today. I was out of driving all over, all over the place today. But we're supposed to vacation you know, and, and they are the example. They own homes already. They've been to own some more homes. Han Paku, you own some more homes as well. And that's not going to stop the vacation life. Pray for me that I learn how to vacation because I'm a workaholic. <laughs> so I'm going to get there. I promise I'm going to get there. You, you right, you right. But the way my clients are set up, bro, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm 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 to help that out one day. So, what y'all have, yep, those three things, yep. So, what y'all have before you, I did, printed off three things. So, about every month or so, we realtors that are part of the Omaha Area Board of Realtors, we get a newsletter. It's called The Review. And so I always open up this newsletter to to see kind of what's what within my industry here within the state. And so there is an awesome article that really backs up what I was talking about last week with property taxes. Part of it is it says a Nebraska property tax reform on the fly. It is a short article of what the unicameral is looking to do for the property taxes in the state of Nebraska. Because that is something that a lot of homeowners right now who own property, that is kind of the bane of their existence right now when it comes to home ownership. They're wondering why are our property taxes steadily going up so much? It's a lot, especially if you have that wrapped up into your mortgage payment. Remember that mortgage payment is made up of principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So when you make your mortgage payment, you have taxes and insurance that are put into a separate account called an escrow account for your loan servicer to build it up. And that way, when your taxes are due and when your insurance is due, your loan servicer sends that payment on to the county and sends it on to whoever you go through for insurance. Okay? So a lot of homeowners are like, you know... This past year, I paid the escrow shortage. So that way, hopefully, my mortgage payment doesn't go up so much. But then the next year, we're told again, hey, you have another escrow shortage. Your mortgage is going to go up. So here's the thing. Your principal has not changed. Your interest rate is fixed. What causes your mortgage payment to go up would be taxes and insurance. That's just the real What you want to do for insurance companies, please understand the insurance company does not care that you are loyal to them. They don't care about that. You want to make sure that you are keeping track to see if they are actually comparatively priced. For example, let's talk about auto insurance. I used to be Allstate with my Passat that I used to have. Allstate will come talking about they wanted to charge me $1,900 for six months with no accidents, none of that, $1,600 a month for full coverage auto insurance for my Passat. 
I'm like, let me browse around and search. I ended up contacting Travelers Insurance. The identical policy, you guys, with Travelers, identical policy, was $8.51 for six months. You don't think I dipped and left all state? Like, when I tell you I got up some gone, because, okay, $1,900 for a whole year? Okay, I could see that with as much driving as I do. But $1,900 for six months, that's a bit redonkulous. And, and I faithfully pay, but they don't care about that. So homeowners, you want to track to see if your insurance company is giving you the best coverage for your house, the best coverage for your house, the best coverage for your house at the great rate. Also, check into something called DIC insurance for homeowners. DIC insurance. DIC insurance is basically what gap coverage is for a car. That's what it is for a house. Did you know if you have natural disaster, that does not exclude you for making your mortgage payment on a house that may no longer be there anymore. Did you know that, Tramon? Yeah. Because I tell you what, my beautiful couple who bought a house, $600,000 home in Elkhorn, in Calarosa East, beautiful area. They built a home with Citadel Homes, gorgeous house. We closed March 22nd of this year. The tornado came a month later and took out everything except for their daughter's bedroom in the basement. They just got lumber for the house last week. Okay. But they still have had to make their mortgage payment on a house that is gone. Yes, ma'am. They're paying for a house that they're not living in, plus the rent at their townhome that they're at right now. It's expensive. It is. You could have a mudslide, tornado. You could have high winds. Nebraska is probably the second in, this, in the country. Number two, we're only behind Colorado for homeowners insurance premiums. It's ridiculous. So you want you as, and I'm speaking to the homeowners right now who are here, you make sure you've got appropriate coverage for your house. Do not take the deductible that has the percentage of value of the house. Had a client this year. She bought a house earlier this year. She chose the cheap premium, didn't read what she was doing. Well, her deductible was a percentage, 3% of the value of her home. Her home was $300,000. Guess how much her deductible was? Nine grand for a $15,000 roof. So you think you're getting what you're paying for, but don't know what you're not getting. So when you talk to your insurance adjuster or you talk to your insurance agent, you ask them the depth of how much your house is covered. If something were to happen to it, whether it's a fire by accident, all of that acts of God, you ask those questions because y'all worked hard to be in them houses, especially highfalutin Bennington property taxes out there. Woo. Y'all worked hard for that. Make sure you understand what your coverage is. Okay. All right, that's my soapbox on that. Now, here's the other sheet. There's a single sheet that has MP Dodge's brokerage on it, at the, the emblem on it. It's this yellow sheet here. And at the top, it says FHA loan cost worksheet. Okay? Hold that thought. So here's what I have comprised for everybody, because I want y'all to see this. Caleb, if you want to, you want to come down here and see this too, because you're going to own a home one day. I don't want you missing out. Got to have you in the know. So you can take, because he's an excellent note taker. So here's what we have that's called the debt to income ratio. Okay? Debt to income ratio is basically your total debts divided by your total gross income. That should give you a, a percentage, okay? Lenders will look at that. 
that is going to determine how much house you can essentially get, okay? Now, let's go into the different loan types. And there are several, okay? There are several loan types. We have a conventional. Conventional loan, usually your credit score is like lower to mid sevens, so to speak, to get a conventional financing. Conventional financing means you can literally go out and find whatever house you want, in a nutshell, because the appraisal process is not going to be as stringent as the government loan ones. Government loans are FHA and VA. The government loans, these two are the only two that are assumable. An assumable loan means, say, Quana wants to sell her house. You bought your house FHA, right? She bought her house FHA. But she has a bomb interest rate, like a nice interest rate, because she bought in 2020 when the Federal Reserve dropped interest rates down to 0%. And we have people in the twos and upper twos. They just, yeah, that's why our prices are so high right now, because the sellers... Or the, or the property owners who owned houses at the time, when they saw their rate come down, hey, we'll stay in our house longer. We'll just refinance our house. But the buyers wanted to take advantage of that too. So because the homeowners were staying longer, that led to a housing shortage. Here you got all the bidding wars that we all talked about, where people were offering fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 beyond the list price because of that rate. That the lower the rate, the more affordable the mortgage payment is. Because I guarantee you, a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house at today's rate, which could be six and a half percent, is vastly different at two hundred fifty thousand at a three percent interest rate. It is vastly different, huge difference, and that's why it's making purchasing so challenging right now. People, buyers, are thinking about their lives right now. They absolutely are. There's really kind of a lull in the market right now. For example, your subdivision, no way in the world my listing around the corner from you should still be on the market. His, right. Historically, 68122, no more than three days on the market. That's historically. Should be no reason why we are on day 12 with only three showings in two weeks. Makes no sense. Also with every other house over there too as well. There's 16 listings over in your neighborhood. 16. Unheard of in Somerset. Okay? Anyway, back to the back cave. So, we have conventional financing. Your DTI, they're looking at 45% DTI for financing on a regular conventional loan. Okay? By the way, my numbers have actually come from a lender. I called and talked to lenders to get these actual numbers. All of them said the same thing, okay? FHA, DTI, no more than 55%. DTI. VA, same thing. Now, NIFA, everybody, who was here heard of NIFA? Who's heard of NIFA? Okay. NIFA is Nebraska's down payment assistance program, okay? So they have essentially... Okay, say for instance, you are FHA and you've worked hard to get your 3.5% down for your financing. So again, for example, $200,000, 3.5% down, that's $7,000, okay? That's your down payment on a $200,000 home. But say you haven't saved enough to get your closing costs over here. Well, NIFA, if you do NIFA Hubba, which is the home buyer's assistance, they'll kick this in for you as a second loan on the house at a 1% interest rate where you have to pay that off within 10 years' time. And then it goes away. Me personally, I'd rather you get NIFA for the interest rate because usually NIFA's interest rates are lower than the regular market rates. I'd rather you get the NIFA rate without the down payment assistance. Just save up your money. Because you're essentially coming in almost upside down if you're taking out the second loan for the house. Does that make sense? Okay. So
So NIFA credit scores. If you are 660 credit score or more, it's a 50% DTI, okay? If you are a 640 credit score to 660, it's a 45% DTI. This is before you purchase the house and the bank is going to look at when you purchase your house, are you still staying within these ratios? So when people say, like I had a client earlier this year, they paid almost $100,000 off in debt at closing. So when they sold their other home, they had enough equity in their house where they had a huge profit on it, but they took that equity to pay down their debt to income ratio in order to make the loan possible. And they did it at closing. You can do that. If you wanna pay off a car at closing, if you wanna pay off credit cards at closing, whatever it is, as long as you have a payoff amount that comes from that creditor, a statement, you can send it into title when your home is under contract and you can pay that off at closing. People do it all the time. And then whatever is left from your home sale, you get to pocket it after all is said and done. But that's how that works. So they're gonna to check to be sure that your new mortgage payment is going to coincide with these ratios. Because the last thing they want to do is, is put you in a place where you could go default on your loan. The reason why FHA interest rates are higher, because these are the most prone to going default on a home loan, believe it or not. Above conventional and above VA, FHA is known to go default. Because it's the cheapest way to get in if you're not military. And let's, here's the thing. The reason why we're doing all this education, Brian and I and a ton of other our, of our colleagues in the city, we meet a lot of people who really are in no position to buy. I don't care what it says on paper. They don't have the assets, and they're getting in over their head. And the first sight of trouble with the house or something that they need, they go start taking out more credit and more credit and more credit against the house or against their own credit and they become overwhelmed. You should be able to enjoy your home. There's a lot of homeowners out here that don't get to enjoy their home. They own the house and are never home because they're working to keep a house that they cannot enjoy. That is real. There's a lot of houses out here that don't have no furniture in them. Don't get me started on the mansions. There is a mansion that I saw recently. The basement is unfinished, and they have the number to one three million for that house with no finished basement. None. Why is it up for sale? People got divorced. They got divorced maybe about three months after they purchased the house. That's what happened. They got divorced. It really is a thing because this house, this sanctuary, we are teaching. Let me, let, me just, let me just sidebar this. Do not think because you have purchased a home that you've all of a sudden are all that and that you just made it. Like, that's, that, that is the value of it. There's a lot of misconception about that out there. That that's the end all to be all. I'm just going to get in without thinking about how it affects my life. How it affects my soul. How it affects my attitude how it affects how I show up to people. I did all this work just to, just to prove whatever to somebody. That is not what this is. This is a tool to build legacy, to build wealth. Many of us have had to start all over again because, frankly, our parents did not plan for us. Let's just be real about it. God bless them. They were dealt the hand they were dealt and that's the way it goes. But the thing about it is, is that we as offspring, sometimes we pick up the bad habits from our parents, which cause us to start all over again in our adulthood. And the thing is, is that if we do not enact some type of discipline, discipline is not punishment. Discipline simply means a type of consistency for how you view money. A lot of us have a bad relationship with money. A horrible relationship with money. Money is a tool. It is a tool. 
to be used wisely. We go back to that word we used last week, stewardship. Stewardship takes, takes discipline. I love Mom Kwana's story for how she got into her house. I love it. She was like, I just love it. She said, Lachelle, here's my credit card. I want you to put it in your box and give it back to me when I close. I said, yes, ma'am. I kept her credit card for what, eight months? Something like that. She's like, I'm not going to spend it. This is it. Because she said, Sister Brawl, I'm not going to get on my case. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I got to do. I said, okay. But she was in acting discipline. But she started that discipline before she started talking to me about buying a house. Long before that. And that's why I want to get on this because do not think when you see these numbers here, 45, 55, 55, don't be this. Don't be the threshold. I'm at 55%. I can get in. Would you still be overwhelmed at 55% with a house? I'm going to tell you right now. Yes, you will. Yeah, you will. Because here's the thing. This is only what is reported on your credit. What you spend at the gas pump, that ain't reported. What you pay constantly for your phone bills a month, that's not reported. It's only reported when you go default too long and they got to go to collections. But that is not Cox, whatever streaming you use, utilities. That's not a part of this right here. That's not a part of this ratio. Those are all those different things. A food? Good Lord, why is milk so much? <laughs> why is a gallon of milk so much? Why are eggs so much? Just meat, laundry detergent, all the different things that it costs for us to maintain our households, those are getting more and more expensive. Your medications, co pays to the doctor's office. We look, we have got to, what we do with the knowledge that we've gotten from Sister Barlow when it comes to budgeting, we have to utilize that. We really do. Whatever system works for you, use it, but be constant about it because I don't, I don't want my clients at 45%, 55, 55, what a, a $400,000 house. I, I just, I just don't. I'm thinking long-term. I'm thinking long-term. I always tell my clients, Brian does the same. Does this house make sense for you to buy? Like, hold up your sheets here. Everybody look at this sheet. Let's look, let's look at the cost sheet. Oh, good. Now, here's an address that you all can look up from your phones. Do this real quick. Go to Zillow, Realtor, MP Dodge, whatever the case may be. Go to any one of those search engines and look up 1887 North 150th Plaza. This house is over there in El Dorado off 144th and Dodge. Okay. 1887 North 150th Plaza. It is a house that is... $320,000. It is not a new house. El Dorado was built 60s, maybe 70s, huh? Yep, 60s. It's a very, very large subdivision, older subdivision, super large. It starts from, so it's El Dorado, Seville, then Pepperwood. That's all one gigantic community over there. Spanning from where the First National Bank is on 144th, where Linden Estates is. It starts from there, going down to Blondo, all the way down to 156, and back up to Dodge. That is Pepperwood, Seville, and El Dorado, that neighborhood. That house is $320,000, right? Okay, so let's get into it. So at $320,000, if you're FHA, you're putting 3.5% down, so your loan amount is going to be three fourteen two hundred four. dollars okay? Now, where you see all these fees here, you probably see the appraisal fee, loan origination fee, credit report, 
flood certification, tax services, file inspection, a survey if you want one. A survey is $500, roughly, and that's just for somebody to tell you, here are your boundary lines for you where you can put a fence at. Because neighbors get into it with each other. Now, this little, this little blade of grass is mine. No, that's my blade of grass. No, they, they, they get vicious. They really do. Just so if you get a survey and put the stake in the ground, no, that's my joint. That's my stuff. I done seen some hilarious arguments over a few blades of grass. No lie. So, but that is a part of some cost there. Then you'll also see items required by lender to be paid in advance. Okay? So we see if there's homeowner's insurance, one year premium is $2,500. That's about average for homeowner's insurance for a whole year. For real, it is. Most times it's actually more, but on average, $2,500. And again, you divide that by 12, that's what it is per month. All right? And then we get into ah, private mortgage insurance. Did y'all know FHA for the entire life of that loan, typically, or unless you reach 20% of what you need to put into it, you're going to have private mortgage insurance the majority of the time. $7,900 just for that. Crazy. Okay. Then we also have escrow. So we have homeowners insurance in escrow for two years or escrow for two months. Then we have the property taxes. Now, just under $4,700 for a whole year for property taxes, that's really not bad for that location because usually they're more like six to Let's see, Barrington Park is probably going to run you a whole lot more at probably nine to 10,000, just crossover. So that's really not that bad. But let's just scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says estimated monthly payment. So your first principal and in interest is $1,985.98 estimate. Homeowner's insurance is $208.33 a month. Okay. Real estate taxes, $390.54. And private mortgage insurance is $218.73 for a grand total of $2,803.59. That is the estimated monthly payment to live in that house if you got it at the list price. Okay? Now, let's go to the other paragraph where it says the purchase price. You see down at the bottom there where it says total estimate funds needed to purchase? That is where your down payment is and your closing costs. So on 320, 3.5% down is actually $11,200. If you take 17,403 minus that 1120 or 11,200, you're left with about six grandish or so, which comes out to be about 2% for closing costs. The reason why closing costs are two and a half or 2% to 5% of the purchase price, it depends upon the state that you live in. It does. But usually, Nebraska, we're somewhere around 2 to 3, typically. But this is on a $320,000 home. Now, let's do a little bit of math. Vicki, the celebrity house, right? I told you about the one that was 317. It was around up to 320. Take 320 times the mill levy of Deer Crest. The mill levy on Deer Crest is a 2.6. So take $320,000 times, times 0 0.026, and what is that? What is that? So the tax is doubled because that's new construction. It's the same price house. One is in an existing community where the tax levy is probably like a 2.2 as opposed to the new construction community where it is a 2.6. And even a new construction, 2.6 is not bad because Bennington is 2.9 most of the time. You go to Bennington Lake, it's as much as 3.2. Some of y'all text me about the... Um, the community center that y'all saw in Bennington. I told you that thing is massive. And for what? It's just, it's just big for nothing. 66,000 a year for property taxes. Jesus, Lord and Savior. 
<laughs> just and here's the kicker. If this is Arizona, them taxes are seven thousand dollars a year in Arizona for the same house. I looked, me and Brian looked it up. We were like, that big old house is ten million dollars, but the taxes are seventy eight hundred dollars a year. You be like, how sway? How? What's wrong with Nebraska? Cause that fool here, you know, you. Bro- I ain't gonna lie. I'd be broke as a joke or something like that. I just and why would I want to pay that? I just whatever. Anyway, but this is a cost sheet. This is a cost sheet. I, I can do these any kind of which way. I'm a number cruncher. I love crunching numbers. But that is on the average price house here in Omaha, on average. Seriously, there is a house that was on the demolition list, cat corner from Coombs Park last year. It closed a few days before Thanksgiving. Do y'all know for that four-bedroom, one-bathroom home that they rehabbed, they got $250,000 for that house across from Coombs Park with no garage. Somebody bought it with no garage. We won't say what they do over there, but we all know what they do over there. <laughs> we all know. You know, for fair housing purposes, I can't say. Um, I am a, I'm licensed to protect the seven protected classes, but we all know what happens down over there for 250 People try to get away from that area, and you can't. It's being rehabbed. It's being, it's being what we call fancy term gentrified, gentrification of epic proportions. You have a lot of investors that go down there, and they are buying up everything. And I do mean everything. And if you don't own it, you will pay a pretty penny to own it because they're buying them for cheap, super cheap. There's one lady, I went, to the, I went to the hair salon yesterday, and there was a lady that wanted to talk to me. She just wanted to get my take on her house because she has a realtor that she's working with. And she told me to look up her house. And I said, ma'am, if they give you $40,000 for that, take it. Because it is in such horrendous shape, horrible shape. The windows are busted out. Her roof is beyond a level of shot. It looks like it got shot. It's probably going to take $3,000 just to clear all of the foliage in the front, all the overgrown plants and leaves. You can't even see the front of the house. It is so chock full of, your dad would be upset, Emma, if he saw, he would be, he would. It it takes a lot to make Mike upset. It really does. He would be hot about that, And, and rightfully so, because that is just neglect. And I told her, if you get $40,000 for that house, you better take it and run. Because I guarantee you it is not worth that. Because you've let it go so bad over the years. And I, and I said, I don't want to know your life story. But something happened. Because if they give you forty for this and you don't, owe, you don't owe a mortgage on it, take it and run. And start your life all over again. Seriously. Anybody have any questions for me? I said this is interactive, so if you have questions, feel free to speak up. Because, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yes, you could. I would love it if people would do that. Because it just, it improves the area. You usually get a return on your investment if you were to do that. Here's the kicker. If you don't have the reserves to do that, you would be hard-pressed to find vendors and contractors who'd be willing to take a deposit to do all the work in hopes that you sell it. For example, I have a couple of houses where one that I sold on 93rd and Ellison, it needed paint in the worst way. I was able to negotiate with my painter to say, you know, hey, would you be willing to take a deposit on this and then at closing be paid for paying this entire house, which she did. 
and I paid her last Friday from what the seller did, but they had to wait about a good three weeks to get their check for work that had been rendered on a lot. And that's just paint. If it were a deck, flooring, roofing, whatever the case may be, you'd have to ask those vendors would they be willing to do that. And some of them would be like, no, because if you have a low on the market, like we are in right now, and what if that seller decides, I'm just going to put my house off the market and just wait a while. Okay, who's going to pay the vendor that did the work for you, that you paid a deposit and you told them when you close, they didn't mean when you close six months from now. They mean when you close 30 days from now. So it just depends. But if you have the resources to do it, absolutely. Yes, rehab it. it all it does is get more money and you get your money back on it. But there's just a lot to it with that. I always tell people, when I say do not, with the government loans, do not un-FHA your house, do not un-VA your house. If you bought your house, FHA or VA, take care of it. They look at stuff like peeling paint, even on newer stuff, they look at peeling paint. They look at the deterioration of a deck. They'll look at a driveway, for example, if I were to have, say this, my brick of a purse, say, say my driveway had a spot that did this, where part of the panels of the driveway kind of came up like this. If it can trip a toe, FHA and VA appraiser will call it out. Say that panel in the driveway that's kind of damaged, but not to the point where it needs to be fully replaced. Say it just needs to be, needs to be mud jacked. A mud jacking is 1500 bucks for one panel. One panel. If you were to replace that whole entire panel, probably another 1500 bucks. I've had sellers who have my one in Platt Smith. We mud jacked their driveway from where the garage door was to where the start of the driveway was. There was probably like a two inch gap, if you will. The mud jacking on that cost almost $4,000. They were military, got orders to go to London and they were selling it to another VA buyer. And that VA buyer said, pay this. The appraiser said, seller do it. And I had to negotiate with a concrete person to get that done, to be paid out at closing. Stuff like that. That's how it works. Or like take, for example, Trill and Simona's house. We had a home inspection, right? And we sent them quite the laundry list, didn't we? We did because their house was purchased as an investment package. A large, like... These people in Lincoln, y'all, they have so much money that they don't even walk their properties that they purchase as a package. They just literally did not, they did not know. You do know I made them put in a new, what I make them do? I made them do a whole lot of stuff. I made them replace the main drain in the house, which was what, $15,000? Because it had this gigantic crack in it, huge crack thing was leaking bad. And I was like, you ain't walked this ever? No. So wait a minute. You are going to not walk the property that you're selling. You have equity in the property as the owner. You're also the realtor for the property that you're in. You're selling it. You never walked the property and you're going to advertise this for FHA and VA. How ignorant are you? Well, we're only here because you said it takes our loan. That's the only reason why we're here. I tell all my government clients, we are only here because it says it takes our loan. Otherwise, we're not coming. We're not. And because you put on here that it accepts their loan, I know this drain ain't going to cut it. You don't fix it. Otherwise, you're going to go back on the market and you don't know if someone else wants to pay what we are offering to pay. So either fix it or y'all got money, fix it. And they did. He laughing because that's exactly how I put it. I was just very matter of fact. 
and very peppy, but I was serious. You're going to fix this drain or we walk. And I'm not afraid to walk. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Let's talk good segue. Let's talk about assumable loans. Assumable loans, FHA, NBA, you cannot do this with conventional. Assumable loans are where the seller is willing to sell you the house and they're willing to sell it to you at their current interest rate. Here's the deal. You're going to take over their current loan. That's how that works. You're going to so say, for instance, say Wells Fargo is the, the holder of their loan and say they have a 2.5% interest rate on their house, right? And you want to take over their whole loan. Remember, banks do not make money off of old loans. They make them off of new loans, okay? Now, here's the kicker. If you are a seller of a house and you have an FHA loan that you got and it's 2.5% down, are you going to sell them your house based upon what you paid for it? Oh, absolutely not. No, you, exactly. You won't make no money on it. So here's what the buyer has to do. Not only do they have to apply for that loan, they also have to show myself and their agent that they have the money, cash, not in 401k, do you have cash to pay my equity, to give me my equity? Because if not, the game is up. Go get you a regular new loan then at your current rate. Assumable loans, they can be done in 30 days. On average, it's about 60 days to assume a loan. I've only seen one that I've done. Well, almost did. My sellers jumped the gun and told their friends that they were selling the house. Friends were like, yeah, we, we love y'all house, blah, 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 blah. Well, Lachelle, can we write the contract? They've got the money. We saw that they got the money. I said, but we didn't see it. And here go their agent, Lachelle, they have it. Here it is. Here it is right here. They have it. Okay, fine. Two weeks later, Mother's Day weekend, the friends call the friends. Hey, y'all, we came by that house. What? Come again? We, we, we can't buy it. Okay, wait a minute. Sellers paid a $500 appraisal fee to make sure they gave you a fair price. They wanted $450 for the house. House appraised for $430. You're going to tell us that you can't buy it? And then you stop speaking to them? We go back on the market. Mother's Day weekend in May with graduations, that's a terrible time. It really is because no one cares. It's graduations and Mother's Day. We sat for two weeks. We got $30,000 below our appraised value. New owners have the grip of equity. The grip. They came in with $30,000 in equity in that house, and my sellers had no choice. They had to go ahead and sell it that way. They were moving to another state. They were already under contract for their other house in another state, and they need their proceeds. They were expecting to get a six-figure earnings from their sale. They only got 40, or maybe 60000 Well, after they paid me and the other broker, 50, no, 45, 45. Quite a dip, all because the homies couldn't buy. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, no, you got to, you, you, assumable loans. Yeah. You did too? They worked out great for you because they kind of flopping around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It just depends, especially, but if you're in a buyer's market, you could do that. We're still on the seller's market. And so sellers are just like, syllable loan. Yeah, we can do it, but we really just want to just get out. So we just want a regular, we want a regular loan. I could advertise it that way, but we're just like, no, I want to close as soon as possible. That's what usually my sellers tell me that when they're in that position, just because of the risk. And it's usually down to, do you have the reserves to pay their equity? And when they bought their homes, 
their equity is not like $25,000, their equity is upwards of $100,000 or more, do you have that? Because usually people who have that, they opt to build because they have the reserves. Like, I can go get what I want in my house, build it to my specification, typically, if I've got $100,000 in the bank, as opposed to assuming a used house. That's how these buyers think a lot of the time. And here's the kicker. Just because it's old doesn't mean it's ratchet. And just because it's new, don't make it better. It literally is in the eye of the beholder. Some people want the older houses because they feel that they are built better. They're not wrong. But some people want the newer houses because it's just they just want to be new-new. So we, we just going to be new-new. And that's how they roll. I tell my first-time home buyers, look at it from this angle. Do you have hopes of acquiring more property? Are you wanting to build a portfolio? If that's the case, don't go to the very top of the echelon of your pre-approval letter. Don't do that. If you can, so if your pre-approval letter is, say, 350 but you want to maybe purchase for maybe like a 215 or whatever, pay that house down over the course of like five years or whatever, and then go buy another property where the bank tells you you don't have to sell your current house to buy the next house. That's how you're, you're building it. So you're going to put somebody in your rental house or you're going to Airbnb it out, however you want to do it, and they're essentially paying the mortgage on that house and then some. So if your mortgage is 1500 bucks a month at, at the mortgage level, but you know that house can garner $2,500 a month in rent, you get to pocket a grand, you ain't going to do that? You don't want to do that? You see? Yeah. I have four rentals that I manage. One of my rentals is 2400 bucks a month. It is. I got it effortlessly, too. I only charged not even quite a dollar a square foot. And I had some other realtors in the city, in, in the region, they were just like upset. And I said, why are you mad? Because you're making us look bad. Why? Because you want that little split over for $3,200 a month or so in a stank? <laughs> for real. It did. I walked it. The dog, man, what did that dog, whatever they had, what, what that dog didn't do in there? Well, the, well, the owner wants $3,200. The owner refuses to change out this ratty carpet. It stinks. You don't, you don't need a pad relay. You need a whole floor. A whole floor. And they finally got down to real. They finally dropped that down to $1,700, and then it went away. Look at that. Be realistic. Here's why I don't charge a bunch for rent for my, for my properties, and I'm grateful that my owners allow me to do this, because if people want to own a house, I'm not trying to break them on rent. Seriously, if you, because they're already paying a mortgage price as it is. They, they, they really are. I mean, my client who's in Papillion, she has, she's a single mom with three young sons fresh from another state. She's only been here, what, four months? She wants to own a house by next year. Well, I'm not about to break her in rent. And she's comfortable paying around $3,500 a month or so for a mortgage. I'm not going to break her in rent. I tell her, save the extra $1,000 or whatever and save up your funds. She's, she's newly divorced, too, on top of it. So, you know, you kind of take a hit on credit sometimes with that. But I said, let's, let's work toward it. You want to own this time next year, July? Let's make it happen. Well, Lachelle, if I don't find something, can I do month to month? Absolutely. We're close enough to base where somebody military would want that house in a minute. You know what I'm saying? But those are things, and here's the thing, y'all. There's a lot of other colleagues of mine that don't think like I think. They think solely about the Skrillas. It is business. Some love to leverage their debt. Some don't like debt. It just depends upon how you want to skin it. It just is. I've been told I have too big a heart for this industry. The devil is a lie. 
I have an excellent heart for this industry. It's because I want to help usher in the integrity back into this industry. Before I am a realtor, I am first an educator. I'm first an educator. If, if I'm helping to teach you, if Brian's helping to teach you, and y'all want to own more properties, we want you to be able to make a sound decision to do it. It's a lot of money. And the value of the U.S. dollar ain't really getting no better on top of it. So if you can master purchasing property here in the States, what's stopping you from doing this internationally? Thought about that? Have you thought about purchasing a condo in Europe? You should. Why not? Children? Grown people children? Yeah, you can. You totally can. Yeah, kid, kid you not. You know, and we're going here next year. Do you know Australia really has a lot of affordable houses? Now I don't know about they got them big old spiders over there. You know, we just seen them on YouTube. You know, you know what I'm saying? They got they got grown people lizards over there and just walking down the street. It was like just hanging in your house, like, sir, you kinda round. <laughs> So you got a big, you know, but you know, they have affordable housing in Australia. Or if you go over to, let's see, South America is a great place to purchase property. Europe is, the African continent is big time. Y'all, you have a lot of things that you can do with real estate, but if we can just master our spending habits, Speaking of which, the last sheet. Now, I researched a lot of monthly budget worksheets. Like, I went through a lot in the last couple of weeks just to see who would be good. And the one that I liked the best was the one from Freddie Mac. It's four pages. This is not for you to fill out right now, but this is for you to go home and take home just to get a start and see where your money is going. Print off your most recent bank statement and look at it. What does it cost to be you? For real, Bishop says it all the time and it's legit real. What does it cost to run your current household? I'm not talking about your future household. I'm talking about right now. What does that cost? What does that look like? Are you a saver? Are you going to learn to be a saver? Speaking of which, I have this really bright idea, and y'all tell me if this is far-fetched or not by the end of the year. How many people in here legit think that they can save $1,000 for themselves by the end of this year? A grand. This is October. A grand. How many of y'all in here, show of hands, can save $1,000 by the end of this year? And I'm not talking about to, I'm talking about seed into your account, like you seed into the house of God. Okay? Because, all right, so everybody that raised their hand, okay, we're in agreement with each other. We are each going to put together a thousand dollars that we are going to seed into our account to start being better savers. Amen. Better savers. Because if you can save a grand, you're only six thousand dollars away from seven thousand dollars for a two hundred thousand dollar home. And then if you're trying to do a $300,000 home, you see what I'm talking about? Let it, let it multiply. Add to it. Add to it. Keep adding to it. You know, if it's, if it's a choice between I want this pair of shoes or it's going into my account, I just did it today. It's going into my account. And what's so crazy is... Why do we have such a guilt trip on ourselves for 
having discipline for ourselves, but when it comes to blessing other people, we do it mindlessly. And I'm talking to myself. I will give my money away. I don't care. I'll give it. My, my license is to bless other people. But when I think about it, when I think of my earnings as a realtor, for the past five years, I've been doing this a full-fledged five years now, when I think of what money I have made in the last five years, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I've been pissed off at myself. Because, but then God had to check me on that. He said, Lachelle, you go overboard for me, I will go overboard for you. You know? But I said, but Lord, I need to learn how to better do my part because of the prayers that I have, some of the things that I dream of, they seem so outlandish that they are frightening at times. But I know that is what I'm supposed to have. I've dreamt about that. The house that I want, y'all can look it up. Bishop told y'all about this house, but he didn't tell you who was looking at this house. The person is me. If you look up 810 Big Sandy, that is a house that I dreamt of 15 years ago that I did not know existed 15 years ago. And when 810 Big Sandy, the house was pulled off the market. When I tell, if I were to tell you, Mama B knows, if I were to tell y'all some of the things that seem like a coincidence with that house, but they're not, that house was built the same year that I bought my disastrous house, 2007. I bought a home for my 27th birthday, which is the foundation of my real estate career. When you pray and you ask God to point you to your mandate, you better learn how to be specific about your prayer. Because I was not specific about how I did mine. Yes, ma'am, it does. You already know. You already know. That house was listed for $2.7 million. It is in Ashland, Nebraska. That is the house that had the big old gates. And I told y'all last week, I'm not afraid of a gate. It just means God will open a door eventually. Okay? But that is the house that I want. It has no neighbors, and it is on water. I can't swim, but I like water. Love it. It has an outdoor shower. It has six bedrooms, seven bathrooms. It's gargantuan. It's huge. It's maintainable. Not like the, not like the country club house in Bennington. That's just ridiculous. I, I just, no, nah, no. Nah. What do I need? No, just, I'd have to pick and choose which toilet I want to use every day. That's just too much house. But this one's not bad. This is okay. That's not bad. But that's what I want. But I don't want that without my husband, though. In a certain seat that I planted, there's a seat that I planted for my husband before I saw this house. When I planted a seed, I planted a kingdom offering for my husband. When for so long, those who know me have known that I have never had a desire to be married. I love my singleness so much that it's just like, because it's ghetto out here. I'm just like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm so good. Like, shoot, it's ghetto out here. And the older you get, the more ghetto it gets. I'm good. But the Lord told me, he told me in an intersection two years ago, he said, you disobedient. I told you to pray for him. And you've taken too long. And you're going to have to undo every single prayer that you prayed against him not being here. He's homeless and defenseless without you. And you've taken too long. I don't want that house without him. So he's first. 
I can't have that house without him. He has to be first. I'm his home. I'm his home. And it takes a lot for me to say something like that because my sister will tell you, I have years and years and years of ex on marriage. I'm good being single. Lord, I belong to you. I'm good on that. I'm so cool being a virgin is, is great. There's no itching, no scratching, no baby daddies, no baby mamas. List goes, man, it's just great. Psh, hallelujah. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I done had a hysterectomy. I can't have kids free. He can play with me and not worry about nothing happening down there. It's great. It's great. Nothing's going to pop out over here. We can have fun and not worry about nothing. It's great. Yeah. I know I'm a trip, Mr. Mike. I know. Pray for my crazy tail. See, this is why I'm over here in the corner. <laughs> that's why that's my seat. You know, God bless Dad for letting me out every now and then. And then I'll go back to my little corner over there and just laugh myself. Yeah, yeah, this is great. But no, seriously, in all seriousness, I cannot have a big Sandy without Mr. Whoever. It's a running joke in my family. My mom, Mommy Lee, I'm the child she's been pregnant with the longest. <laughs> the longest. <laughs> Am I ever going to come out? <laughs> the longest. <laughs> my older sister, she's about to be next week. How many years? 18 years next week, her and Marcus. Woohoo! <laughs> And then she's got her spiritual daughters. The other one is just married out in Bennington, living her best life. Then there's Shell. <laughs> and there's Shell. She's been with child with me a long time. And she's like, you can't leave my house unless he comes. And I'm just like, mom, don't pray that. She said, I done prayed it. You can't leave Florence Boulevard unless he comes. And I said, well, Lord, guess I need to be old. Faith about works is dead, right? I said that last week, be a good steward of your spirit because I, I can't have Big Sandy if he's not here first. So I'm in the same boat as y'all. We have different things we're believing God for. And when I see him, I'm going to thoroughly apologize to him. Thoroughly. I don't think, I don't think women understand just how, just how powerful God has made us to be as help meets. We think it's a subservient thing. We empower him. We empower that man when he chooses us. We see things that maybe he can't see at that moment because he has to do what he has to do. And God bless him. He'll have a very strong, strong in the Lord wife. Pray in the Lord because I can be headstrong. And that's how I am as a realtor. I'm a very headstrong realtor when it comes to my clients. I'm literally a barracuda that you might not want to meet if you think you're going to wrong my client. And that's why all this that we're doing right now, you guys, this is what you call a buyer consultation. I have this with every single buyer. Every buyer gets this. I don't show a house. Even before the whole NAR lawsuit, this is what I did. This is, this is what I do. Because I need to know where y'all stand. You need to let me know where you stand, you know, because we sometimes we live in dream world a lot of time and that's okay too, but we also have to come to reality and face facts 
but then also have faith beyond our facts too. There's a fine balance in all of that. I got to have faith beyond my facts, but I also got to face my facts. But you know, it's, yeah. And you just ask the Lord to keep you and help you and guide you through. Because in him, there is no confusion if you don't want there to be. If you don't want there to be confusion. Because we can cause a lot of confusion. A lot of times, confusion gets called when he's already told you to do something. And you go run tell that to other people. And they put their input into the scenario when he's already told you, no, go do this. (laughs) Go do that. But then we want to go get somebody who understands our needs for the moment and sometimes will call us in that moment when God says no go do this just go do it come on come on you know what I'm saying so if each of us can put a thousand dollars together by the end of this year to start what you are believing God for he's just like that's your mustard seed right there. That's your mustard seed of faith right there. Just, just do it. Shoot, surprise yourself. See what you're made of. See what you can do. And if $1,000 is easy for you, then try too. You know what I'm saying? Surprise yourself. You're a lot, some of, a lot of us are wiser than what we think. A lot of us are more capable than what we believe. And we're so used to some type of deficit all the time that we don't really know what life is like to, no pun intended, to be free. Like, okay, this, this is easier than what I thought it was. I was making a big deal out of nothing. This is, I can do this. Okay. It's it's just like when you when you piece together a puzzle, you're just like, okay, okay, here, 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 and then, then you then here you go. Now it's finished. You're at the finish line. I I accomplished what I set out to do. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you did it for me, but you also helped me to believe that I could do it. And you can. We all can. No one here is too young. No one here is too old. It's about what you want your God to do for you. But he is, again, showing us our part, showing us what it takes. And here's the thing. This is just the surface of it. Because when you get into underwriting those who are homeowners, there are a lot of moving parts. A lot. Let's talk about child support. Whether you've been court ordered or not, it does pop up. Did you know if it doesn't pop up on your credit, it pops up on title? I got somebody a house almost three years ago. We were the second offer. We were the backup offer. Didn't know we were the backup offer. But we had lost the house because we got outbid. And then two... Two or three weeks later, the listing agent approaches me at the Christmas party. Well, he doesn't approach me. I actually approached him and gave he and his wife a hug. And he said, man, Michelle, I didn't think you would ever talk to me. And I said, why? He said, because we kind of put you and your clients on a little bit of a wild goose chase and everything. But I didn't think you would ever speak to me because of how it happened. And I said, Mr. Gary, I know it's just business. It's just where we, where we are right now. It's okay. We'll find the house. Jackie's birthday. Jackson's birthday. I get a call from Mr. Gary. Hey, Lachelle, do your buyers still want that house? I said, hell yeah, they do. Yeah, sure enough. He's like, can you write me a fresh contract for that amount and send it over? I got them the house that they were dreaming of having all because... I went and spoke to Mr. Gary and gave his wife a hug at the Christmas party. No help, no grudge. Was I mean, was I hot that we lost it? Yeah. I mean, their offer had their, their wedding anniversary date in it. That was a real, that was a fly offer, you know? It was November 28th. 
it was $360,011.28. That was their offer with their anniversary date in it. And they said no. And made us wait for three days before they told us no. And they ended up getting the house with a brand new roof. In January, it got put on. We had a 70 degree day in January. And then two days later, the blizzard came, the roof got put on so that they could close. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that we see out there in the fields. God does miracles for our clients, whether they know him or not. I pray for every single client. I pray over their houses. I pray over my yard signs. I pray over myself. I mean, God had to remind me just a few days ago, you do remember that I do show up on time. You do remember that, right? And I said, yes, Lord, you do. He said, okay, quit tripping. I will bring the buyer for your sellers at the opportune time. Stop paying attention to the politics. Stop paying attention to the market. Just stop paying attention to how your, your, your sellers feel and they're being antsy. I know what you talked to me about. I know what you prayed. It's going to happen. Pipe down. Same for y'all. Same for y'all. Samaria, you're going to be a homeowner one day. Okay? Zechariah, you're going to be a homeowner one day. And I need you to hurry up and get your credentials because you're like needed in the real estate industry badly. <laughs> you, you're getting your stuff in plumbing, correct? Yep. All right. Not yeah, but yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. Because you know why? You're going to want to know how to conduct yourself and articulate yourself when it comes to your business and to show that you are indeed a master plumber. And not to be looked down upon, no side-eyeing you, no, you take me seriously because I have the credentials. I am a master plumber. So there's no, yeah, mm -mm. you're a businessman. Trust and believe you have the potential to easily make at least $200,000 a year because somebody's pipes are always busting. Always. Somebody's water heater is going to hell in a handbasket right now, all because they haven't been calling you to service it. We got hard water in Nebraska, real bad hard water. And those sediments at the bottom of those tanks, nobody's touching them until they have no hot water and they want to just, hey, how come my pilot light isn't turning on anymore? That's because they weren't calling a Zach. You know what I'm saying? You're going to own a home, Roshana. You know, on a home. Randy and Dante's mansion finna come. It's gonna come. LaDonna, you already own? You're going to. If that's what you desire, okay, be my business. Look, let's 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 dispel the whole term standing on business. We're not standing on rent because that's somebody else's business. You want to stand on business, stand on business of your discipline to get to where you want to go. All God requires is that you be obedient to do your part. I don't know what y'all prayed and asked God to do for you. I don't. I'm not in nobody's business like that. I'm in my own, deep into my own. But if there's something that he has told you to do, for the next level in your life and you're lagging and you're taking too long to do it. He just like, okay, well, I'm just going to sit too. You going to sit. I'm going to sit. You ain't talking to me. You're not getting up doing what I've, I've instructed you to do. What gives? Do you not believe that I will do it? Or do you not see yourself out of the situation? Can you see beyond what is now? Tina, you're going to have a ton of homes. You've got to at least get three 
Well, no, at least four, because one of them, one, two, three, because mm, they're not staying with you the rest of their life. They got to have their own crib. <laughs> Is this what you desire to? You want to own to? You can do it. You can do it, Miss Cynthia. You can absolutely do it. <laughs> Believe it. Because all, all in your eyes, your, your eyes say to me, show for real? That's what your eyes say. Show for real? I can? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. But then, yes, you will. Yes, I will. Yeah. Is it can be done. Don't just look. Plan for it. Let's go. Let's, let's do it. Keith and Lisa, what's the next crib y'all going to buy? The next one. Lord, I pray I can get that kind of deal again. 207, that was a banging deal. Because today, man, for that, no bueno. Can't, like, can't. That was, that was the Lord's price for y'all with that. Because ain't no way in the world on today's market. <laughs> nah. That's just not a thing. Yep. And what did I do with the cat? No, I picked up the cat and the cat and the cat, the cat was fine. I picked up the cat, played with the cat while they toured the house. And, and, then, and then the cat, and then she was like, where'd the cat go? The cat went to bed. Uh, animals love me. Cats and dogs, they all love me. But I've already talked to y'all before. Y'all finna buy again. We already know what y'all finna do. Oh, let's talk. Who, who in here besides military? Who in here besides the McBrides are military? Huh? No, have benefits, have military benefits, even so, have VA benefits. Marcus does. Okay, let's get into, and you guys do, let's get into this piece. This is for the VA buyers. VA buyers, if you are not 10% disabled or greater, you have what's called a VA funding fee. If you are a first time home buyer, the VA funding fee is 2.15% of the purchase price on top of the purchase price for the first time. After that, consecutively, it's 3.6% VA funding fee on top of it. Okay? So why do we have a VA funding fee? Veteran Affairs, they have that fee to have go back into their VA program so that way other buyers can afford to not have to put more money down. That's why they have the 0% because they have the VA funding fee. It's the vet's way of giving back to the VA so that way other VA buyers don't have to purchase with a down payment. That's what that is. But if you are 10% disabled or greater, you don't have to pay the VA funding fee. If you are 100% disabled, we have something called the homestead exemption. Nebraska has that to where if you're 100% disabled, you don't pay property taxes, but you have to already own the house in order to apply for that exemption. And there is a window of time to do it. I believe it's like the first week of February to the very end of June every year. Douglas and Sarpy County. That's how that rolls. Yes, ma'am. Double check with the county. I know military gets that, but double check with the county, Douglas County, to see if that can affect you. Because if you are 100% disabled, you need to ask about the homestead exemption. Out of all my clients that I have, I only have seven buyers that have the homestead exemption, the 100%. And some of them, they had to... Some of them, when I met them, they were like 85 to 90% and had to keep going back to VA to push for the 100 and they finally got it, which brought their mortgage payments down significantly because they didn't have them high taxes no more. All they had to worry about was the insurance and then the principal and interest. That was it. 
So the, it, there's, it's, it's a thing. It really is. Any questions for me? Because I'm going to wrap this up. Yes, ma'am. It could be a mixture of both. I, was, I always say to defer to county on that to see what their rules are with that. I do know that, like, for example, one client who lives in Papillion, I sold them the model home for Woodland when I, first, when I was first licensed. And so if something happens to him because he is the one with the benefits, then it, it goes to his spouse, to his wife. Those same exemptions go to his wife if he were to die. And he's a, he's a young, he's in his late, late 40s, early 50s. Yes, Dave. Really? Really, because, because four of mine who are, who are 100%, they don't have walkers. But they... They're, all my people are military, yep. Yep. They got their disabilities while in combat. Yep. Yep. I haven't had a non-military person, 100% disability, get that same thing like that. All my, my seven are all military. See, like I said, they have different rules, different strokes. So that's why I said always call county on that. But it's out there. Mm hmm Yep. And the reason why they want to do that is to make sure that, one boy, he's alive. And, like, and do you really need it? Yep. They, their checks and balances are everything. Everything. Mm hmm Yep. Yep. Even be careful with, you know, survivorship stuff when it comes to say, you know, say, say you were not, your, say your spouse passed away and they were military. But you had a whole bunch of years that passed from their death until you claimed survivorship stuff. It happened to my grandmother. She, she ended up getting a stroke five years ago. And my aunt applied for survivorship benefits for her because my grandfather was military and then come tell her a couple years later they overpaid her and she had to pay it back. My grandmother's in her mid-90s. Yep. Let's be careful with that too, with those survivorships. Because they, they're, the thing is when it comes to government, when it comes to insurance, County, local, they're not trying to give out no more than what they have to to you when it comes to whatever. They are just, talk about tightwad. <laughs> they, they, they are. They will try to find a way to not give you what you think is owed to you. So you always want to be on the up and up about that all the time. Great questions. Any other questions? Y'all good? Okay, so... This budget that's right here, couples, go home, talk about that. Single people, go home, ponder that with the Lord, <laughs> however you want to do it. But ponder it. Write it down. Check your mailboxes. Check your mailboxes. If you're behind on bills, check your mailboxes. I'm so serious. And then also, give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. Because when you're jumping off into something new, it can be scary sometimes. It can. Especially when someone hasn't shown it to you before outside of a class like this. Give yourself grace. Um, and, and thank God for the steps that you are taking, whether they are small or great. Thank God for those steps to redo something. Because, Dave, you and Free, y'all going to teach your children something completely different. Something completely different. Where the same struggles y'all have grown up with will not be theirs. 
but you're going to teach them the worth ethic that it takes to maintain it. It's the difference between the, the kid with the silver spoon in their mouth who thinks that they are entitled to that as opposed to the kid with the silver spoon in his mouth where the parents is like, no, I need to show you how to maintain this. I'm not giving this to you unless you show me you can maintain it. I work too hard for it. I set it up for you, but I'm not giving it to you unless you can show me you can maintain this. Because once you buy all this house right here, you need to maintain it. You need to maintain it. Because there's, I'm telling y'all, there's nothing that is more hurtful than when I have to tell a seller, hey, you depreciated your house due to lack of maintenance, and now it's going to get less for it than what you wanted. And y'all, don't be so quick to help your family. Has it dawned on you that maybe God has them in that position for a reason? And not for you to be coming in and helping. And I've learned that. I've learned that over the years. With blood, with people that were like family, I've learned that. You can't be the Savior. You're not the Savior. You're not Jesus Christ. You are but a vessel. Now, if he leads you to do something, that's one thing. But it cannot be a constant because that means you're allowing that person with a lack of discipline to drain your discipline. And that's real. So think about that. It's like the crabs in a bucket kind of a thing. One person gets it and they're about to get out. Well, take me with you. Not all the time. I can't always take you with me. Because your path is yours and mine is mine. You know what I'm saying? But if, you are, if you're responsible for people in your house, you're responsible to show them something. And we can't come up here and say these I am's and say that I am dominion and we're not taking it. Because either God is lying or I'm lying. And we know he don't lie, so that would be me. You know, does that make sense? So this, we, we have these classes to give the man of God rest. His level of tired is, I have no words for the level of tired that that man is right now. He is beyond exhausted on many levels, not because of the battles he has to fight for us in here to help us win, but the ones that are out there too. Bro is tired. And so when we can show that we're strong enough to help undergird this house that God has set up, that he's the leader of, by coming and not only learning things like this, but also to apply it at home, that gives the Lord a lot of glory. And it also brings joy to the man of God. A tremendous amount of joy. We may be a very small church but we are a mighty church and everybody in here be encouraged. Y'all are some serving people. Y'all are some faithful people. Everybody in here is, have you ever taken a step back to look at just how faithful God has made you to be after all these years? If you were to come in and really look at the first time you came in here, some of y'all were born here, and now y'all have posts in here, and now y'all are building houses and buying houses and getting into investments. You're learning so much, and you're building businesses. Have you looked at how far God has brought you? He's brought y'all a mighty long, long way, such a long way. So give yourself grace, but thank God to Caleb, you gonna own, you and Chris, y'all gonna own stuff. Y'all gonna buy your mama a house, a piece. The way she loved other people's kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lana, Lana has no choice but to be blessed. The way she loves other people's kids. You know what I'm saying? 
but I'm done. All right, I'm through. Thank y'all for coming to part two. Has everybody in here been baptized in Jesus' name? I think everybody has. You know what? Everybody come to the front. We're going to get in a corporate circle. Because we're going to stand in agreement with each other. Pastor KT, I want you to pray for this circle. Hello. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to my coats over there, too. Everybody lock hands. And as he prays for, for this circle and, and all of us, I also want you, I want you to pray for the person to your right. Speak something over them. Because you know the thing about it is that whoever is to your left is speaking something over you. Okay? And then also, too, Miss Deborah has a birthday on Sunday. And she and, and my mom, LeMay Lee, they are going to go on the train early tomorrow morning to, at 5 a.m. Vyra, you too? You've already been on that road before. Yes. So the two of them are, are going to celebrate her birthday. Don't she look good, y'all? So y'all so y'all so y'all keep that train and that conductor of that train in much prayer in every every track in Jesus name and that they have a blessed time. All right. Pastor KT, please pray for us. Precious Lord, Father and Savior in heaven. Here's your people standing before you, Father. We thank you. For the woman of God that taught. We thank you Lord Jesus. Because some people learn stuff. They had no clue of. They were paying mortgage. And didn't even know what mortgage was. They didn't know that it consisted. Of principal interest. Taxes and insurance. But now they know. Now in their minds, they're getting prepared. They didn't realize, Father, hallelujah, that discipline and obedience equals home ownership. And the woman of God actually taught it also equals soul ownership. So bless every soul right now, Father, hallelujah that are locked in to prosper as their soul prospers. Bless every soul right now, thinking of what they wish to achieve, thinking of their home right now, putting together the floor plans right now, putting together where the walk-in closets are going to be. Putting together their three, four car garages. Every soul right now that imagining it and believing it, Father, hallelujah. And ready to plant the seeds and to be obedient and to do like the woman of God said, plant into their own savings account. Because they believe you. Faith without works is dead. So they're going to work, Father, hallelujah. Bless that soul. 
that you do exceeding abundantly above whatever they can even think. We believe and receive it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.